5.2 congruent polygons. Uh, what you're going to learn today is we're going to talk about um, how to identify and use corresponding parts. And we'll talk about how to use the third angles theorem, key vocabulary words, corresponding parts, and congruent figures. All right, um, recall that two geometric figures are congruent if and only if a rigid motion or a composition of rigid motions maps one of the figures onto the other. Those are things like the stuff we did with um, translations, reflections, rotations. Those are our rigid motions. And if we can match e each part of the figure um, to its corresponding part, that's what we would call a rigid motion. Okay, remember that we preserve the length and angle measure so the shape doesn't change. Okay, and so looking at these triangles here, I have triangle ABC and triangle DEF. Right. I can map those two images on top of each other so that angle A is congruent to angle D, angle B is congruent to angle E, etc. Uh, one important thing to note is that when you write a congruent statement for two polygons, you always list the corresponding vertices in the same order. In other words, you're going to match them. So if you have triangle ABC, you have to call it triangle DEF. If you mix the order, to say something like triangle BCA, then you have to switch the order on the second triangle as well. So triangle BCA would be congruent to triangle EFD. Okay, notice that the tick marks, these arc marks, have to match. So angle A has one arc that corresponds to angle D, which has one arc. Right, here's example number one. It says write a congruent statement for the given triangles. We want to identify all pairs of congruent corresponding tri uh, parts. Right. Um, before I name the triangles, I want to look at the individual pieces, see how they correspond, how they match up, and then that will help me name the two triangles in the order that I need to. Uh, so it's easiest to start with the angles. Uh, angle L only has one tick mark, so that I'm going to look on the other triangle and see where I find that one arc, which is going to be an R. So now angle L is congruent to angle R. Angle J has two tick marks, so that corresponds with T. On my third angle K, since it has three arcs on it, uh, that means it corresponds to angle S. Okay, so those are my angle pairs. Now I have to look at my side pairs, my segments. So if I'm going to start with this segment JK that only has one tick mark on it, I know segment JK is corresponding to this segment down here, but the question is, is it ST or is it TS? Uh, to decide that, i got to look at the angles. I know it's J corresponds to T because of the two tick marks here. So if I call it segment JK, the other segment has to be segment TS. Okay? If I called it segment K A KJ, then I would have to switch these two and I would have to call it segment ST. Okay, the corresponding parts. That's why this part right here is important. Corresponding. You've got to match them up. So the next one would be, uh, let's call it segment KL. Now K has three tick marks and it goes to L which has one. So on this triangle I'm looking at the same thing. I have to go from S to R. Okay. And then my third um, side pairs, I'm um, saying so JK, KL, I've got to go LJ. All right, L has one tick mark, J has two. So I'm going from one to two. So that means I have to go R to T. Okay. Those are my corresponding sides. Now, now I can name them. Uh, if I decide to call the first one triangle JKL, my corresponding letters tell me which um, of these to match it up to. So J matched with T, so I have to call it triangle T. K goes to S, so it would be TS. And then L corresponds to R, so it would be TS. R. Okay. Triangle JKL is congruent to triangle TSR. Alright, here's example number two. So then the diagram DEFG is congruent to SPQR. We want to find the value of X, and then we 
we want to find the value of y. Right, so I'm going to start with x. Um, to do that, um, this, sec this information right here is very important because it tells me how to match up the corresponding parts. All right, so looking at the diagram, I want to find the value of x. Um, easiest thing for me, I don't want to use this one because it's got the y and an x together in the equation. What I do want to look for is something else that just has the x in it by itself, if possible. Um, in this case, it does. I want to look at this segment QR. All right, so QR is going to be kind of where my start. I know QR is congruent to FG, and that's because of the order, QR, FG. So I know those two are congruent, which means they're equal. So I know QR is equal to the distance between F to G, right, which is 12. So I'm going to QR and FG, those two are corresponding. So that's how I'm going to set up my equation. I know 2x minus 4 has to equal 12. We solve for x, I mean I have to add 4 to both sides. That tells me that 2x is equal to 16. Divide by 2 tells me that x is 8. Okay. So I know for the first one, the answer for x is 8. Right. Now we want to look at the second problem. We want to find the value of y. This one has the uh, x and the y together, but since we know x is 8, write that up here, x is equal to 8, I can substitute that in here. So we're looking at angle Q. Angle Q corresponds to angle F, and I know F is 68 degrees. So let me write that down. Um, angle Q is congruent to angle F based on this information here, which means the measure of angle Q is equal to the measure of angle F. So I'm going to write 6y plus x has to equal 68. Okay. But we just solved for um, x, so I'm going to rewrite, I'm going to substitute x, I'm going to rewrite that as 8. Okay. So now I can subtract 8 from both sides. Tells me that 6y is equal to 60, which means y is equal to 10. All right, so for this one, y is equal to 10, x is equal to 8. All right, here we got example number three. It says you divide a wall into orange and purple sections along segment JK. Uh, will the sections of the walls be congruent? Explain. So here's our diagram. Here's the wall that we're painting, and this line segment JK is kind of the dividing line where it splits it. So we've got to determine, are these two sections going to be equal? Um, the drawing, the diagram went ahead and gave us some information. Um, so basically congruent, i got to know if they're the same size and the same shape. Okay. Um, looking at the shape, yes, it's got both two shapes have the four different sides. Um, and we've got to match all the things up. So um, A, B, C, and D, those are all right triangles. So I know off the top, uh, right angles, excuse me. So I know angle A is going to be congruent to angle C. Because right, it kind of looks like these two are kind of flipped. One's inverted over the other one. So A corresponds to C. Um, looks like angle D would be congruent to angle B. Right, really all four of those angles are congruent to each other. But the ones that I want to match looks like A and C, D and B. Um, then I want to look at these angles in here. Um, what I notice is that segment AB is perpendicular to segment BC or CB. It's called CB. Okay. And then I also have this segment down here at the bottom, DC. That's perpendicular to CB. Right. If both of these two um, segments are perpendicular um, to the same transversal, um, what that did from back um, in chapter 2, I believe, no, chapter 3, um, what that means, because these two things are true, that means that segment AB is actually parallel to segment DC. Right. And because they're parallel, I have a transversal JK. I can use my parallel lines theorem to tell me or to prove that 
angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. And then I also know angle 2 is congruent to angle 3, right, because they're alternate interior angles. Right. So that means I got all my angles matched up here. Now I got to show that my sides are congruent. I'm um, looking at the diagram. I know that segment AJ is congruent because of the tick mark. It's going to be congruent to CK. Right. And then I know that, um, let's go with DK. That is going to be congruent to segment BJ. And then we have my third pair, I know AD um, is congruent to CB. Okay, um, but now I need the fourth side. I got this one, this one, this one. Um, you'll remember back in chapter two, we did something called the reflexive property, and it said that a segment is always congruent to itself, which is going to come in handy here because there's my fourth um, segment. I got my four sides and my four angles. So my answer would be yes. Um, let's see if we call this A, D, K, J. It would be congruent to that would be C, B, J, K. Those two um, trapezoids would be congruent. All right, this next theorem, theorem 5.3, properties of triangle congruence, is just simply saying the properties that we used before about uh, reflexive, symmetric, and transitive, um, those things still apply, and I can use them to solve proofs related to triangles. All right, and theorem 5.4, third angles theorem, that's something we've used in the past that we're going to use here again. That simply says that if you got two pairs of corresponding angles that are congruent to each other, then that third pair of angles, in this case, in this example, um, angle C and angle F would have to be congruent because I have two pairs um, that are congruent. And remember that angles in a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. All right, here's example number four. Um, in this example, we want to find the measure of angle BDC. All right, so um, BDC is kind of this angle right in here. Um, B, D, C. So we want to find out this angle right here. We know some of it. We know some of it is 30. Um, now we've got to look at um, what we have. I know angle A is congruent to angle B because of these little tick marks here. So if A is 45, that means B is 45 degrees. Then we have another set of tick marks here at angle A, D, C, and angle B, C, D. This one's 30, this is 30. Okay. Now I want to look at that because I'm looking at this triangle here. So now that I got my information, my transfer, it's like I didn't have this here anymore. All of that is temporarily gone. So I'm focusing on this left triangle here. Right. And if you remember from our previous lesson, these three angles here, B, C, and what would be D, this outer angle here, B, D, C, those three have to add up to 180. So I have the 30 plus the 45 plus some angle. We don't know that angle just yet, so I'm going to call it X just for the time being. Um, that has to add up to 180. All right, so uh, I'm going to call this angle here is my X. And so I add those up at 75 plus X equals 180. If I take the 75 away from both sides, um, I get 105. Now that's from here all the way to here. Notice we want BDC, so that would be my answer. That angle X is 105. X is going to be our angle, so really I guess we should. To be proper, we'll say the measure of angle BDC is 105 degrees. All right, example number five, um, we're going to have to do a proof on this one. It says, use the information in the figure to prove that triangle ACD, or ACD, is congruent to triangle CAB. 
um, using the given information. Um, so notice, in order to do that, to show the congruency, we have to show that all the segments are congruent and the corresponding angles are congruent. So, um, let's go ahead and get started with our statements and our reasons. All right, I'm going to kind of break this up into two sections. First, I want to do the, the segments. I want to do the sides. Um, so I know that segment AD is congruent to segment CB. And I also know that CD is congruent to CD is going to be congruent to um, AB, segment AB, right, and that would be because it was given. Right, it was given off the diagram. Right. Now I'm going to do my third pair because I have two triangles, so I have to give my three sides. There's two of the sides. Um, the third one is simply going to say that segment AC is congruent to AC. Because the two triangles are kind of, they're, they're touching, they're sharing that side. So AC is congruent to AC, and we call that the reflexive property. Okay. Now I want to look at my angles. Um, again, my angles are given to me, so um, I have to name them. So let's go DAC. Angle DAC is congruent to angle, we go from D to A to C, we'd have to go... B, C, A. And then I have another pair here that would go D, C, A. Okay, and then that's going to go, if I go D, C, A, I've got to go B, A, C. All right, and that would be given. Right, these little red markings and tick marks, that's where I'm getting my given information. So I know I have two pairs of corresponding angles. Um, this third pair, I can go ahead and call those angle A. Right, I guess we're starting with the other triangle, so let's go ahead and put that one first. We'll say angle D is congruent to angle A. All right, now this one you have to think back for a minute, um, because we talked about it when we first introduced some stuff about triangles. Um, that one's called the third angles theorem. Right, and if you don't remember, what that means is if you have two pairs of angles that are congruent, which we do right here, I know this angle is congruent to this one, this angle is congruent to that one. Um, because those two pairs are congruent, that means this third pair has to be congruent because they all have to add up to 180. Alright, so now I have my corresponding parts. I've got my three sides, and I've got my three angle pairs. Um, so we've proven that they're the same size and the same shape, so now I can name these, I can call this triangle ACD is congruent to triangle CAB, all right. and the reason I would call that for that is I would say all corresponding parts are congruent. That's just kind of how we defined congruency.